Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the first in a series of video tutorials on how to code in Unity 5. So this series will be focusing on creating scripts in Unity and learning different things that we can do inside these scripts. So if you've seen any of my other tutorials, um, I mostly use JavaScript. However, this series will be using C Sharp as well as JavaScript. So we'll be focusing on the fact that we can use two completely different scripts, yet they're very similar in many different ways. So firstly, I have uh, this scene open in Unity. It's a brand new project, brand new scene. Um, I'm going to create a folder just here. I'm going to call it scripts. And in this folder, I'm going to right click, create, and I'm going to start with a brand new C sharp script. I'm going to call this example 01. So first thing you'll notice is over here uh, in the inspector pane, when you have your script selected, you'll have a quick little kind of preview of what is in the script. If you go to edit and preferences too, and then external tools, you can actually select whether you want to use Mono Develop or if you have it installed Visual Studio. So in this series, I'll be using Mono Develop, but if you have Visual Studio, that's completely fine. It will still follow in the same way. So if we double click our script down here, or you can press enter, it will open up in your chosen program. In this case, as I say, Mono Develop. Now, when you create a new script, you'll notice that it gives you uh, a couple of lines to begin with. So these first two, I'm not going to go into at the moment, but they are somewhat important to scripting itself. This particular one, public class example one, mono behavior, best way to describe this is you absolutely need this line of code in your script and it needs to stay this way. The reason is because mono behavior is the Basically, it's the class that every script takes from it. It derives from that. JavaScript will automatically do it, so you wouldn't need this line of code within uh, a JavaScript. However, when you're using C Sharp, you have to state this particular line, otherwise your script just will not work. It also has to remain the same. Our script is called example01, so this has to be example01. If you were to change this to, let's say, 02, the whole script would not work. When you have an open curly bracket, it means it's opening something, it's starting something within this, uh, in this case, class. In the case of this void here, it's starting within this void, or as it's known in JavaScript, function. A double slash means that this piece of the code will not be read. It can be used for things like notes. So as long as you have double slash, you can put notes anywhere you want within the script. You can put it there, you can put it after, it will still be read. One place you can't put it though is between a line. So if you were to put here, you wouldn't be able to put it there because it misses out these parentheses here and it misses out the open curly bracket just there. So I'm going to undo them. I'm going to delete all the double slashes I don't think we need them at the moment. So here we have void start and void update. As I said earlier, using um, a void is the same as using a function in JavaScript, but we'll go into that a bit later on anyway. So let's get rid of void update. We just want the start at the moment. So let's write a simple piece of code and then evaluate where we're going with it. So let's start with game object. So you'll notice at this point, the G is lowercase and the O is capital. There are two different ways you can write it, game object and game object. However, for this one, you have to make sure you low, use a lowercase G. Coding in Unity is case sensitive. You have to be very careful about your capitalization on some letters. So let's put a dot and then let's put set active. You can see that it's already auto filling as it seems to know sort of where we're going. 
We're not going to use autofill with this because we want to type everything from scratch to give us that knowledge and that practice. Uh, let's open bracket, our parentheses, and let's put false. Let's close and then a semicolon. So let's review this particular line. What we're doing is the game object that this script will be attached to, we are setting active false. So we are turning off the game object. That means it will no longer display. And the semicolon at the end is a way of the script to know that that is the end of the line. It can move on to the next line. So most lines in this case will end with a semicolon. So let's save that script. You'll notice this closed curly bracket when you click by it should highlight this open curly bracket. That is suggesting that this whole function or void is complete. This one will close the whole script. So just double check that that's saved and let's head back into Unity. Down here in the right corner, you may have a little uh, loading icon. This is just Unity thinking and checking the script just to make sure everything works OK. So let's use our script in the scene. Game object, 3D object, and I'm just going to choose a sphere. Press play and just make sure our camera can see our sphere, and it can. So now I'm going to drag and drop the script onto the sphere just there. And down here in the inspector pane, you should see example 01 script right there. And if you remember, our script will set the game object as false for inactive. Sorry, false for set active. That means when we press play, the script will run and this sphere won't be there. And as you can see, over here in the inspector pane, the script has worked and it's set it as inactive. Something else I'm going to go into now. Let's put this as. Let's take out the T from active and save. And you can see that this is now turned red, indicating something may possibly be wrong. Another way of noting that is when you head back into Unity, down here at the bottom, you may get an error. So if you head to console, let's click clear to get rid of things we don't need. So it's saying that this is still a problem. So if we double click this, it will take us to the line in question that seemed wrong. And it is wrong because we've taken out the T in active. So it doesn't exist. That it may, Unity and uh, Mono Develop can't understand what is going on here because active is not something that we should use. So let's change that back to active. Let's save. Let's head back to Unity. And after a couple of seconds, when the script has been read, it should disappear. And it does. These two are only relating to Unity itself. We don't need to worry about them. So we've written a very, very simple script in C Sharp. Now, the great thing about Unity is that it can support two scripts. So let's go to JavaScript. And let's have this as example 02. And let's open that up in Mono Develop. Now the same works here. It already gives you a couple of lines to start with. Usually in my other tutorials, I delete all these lines and start from scratch. However, I'm just going to delete this one at the top. It has no real function. Uh, I'm going to get rid of function update as well. And you can see here, function is highlighted blue, much in the same way that void is highlighted blue in C sharp. So they are the same sort of thing. So having function start in um, JavaScript is the same as having void start in C sharp. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy this script into JavaScript. So we're going to convert it. Now, the fantastic thing about most of um, C sharp and JavaScript is that lines are virtually the same. So although we've written this in C sharp, we can literally copy this game object dot set active dot false and put it in our JavaScript. The line is exactly the same. So that is a very simple way of seeing how it can convert. So let's save that script. 
down here it's thinking again and what we're going to do now is I'm going to create a game object and I'm going to do cube I'm going to move it out a little bit so the sphere has the C sharp script on it which will um, remove the sphere which it does and our cube is still active so let's put example 2 on the cube and you'll see down here our JavaScript is there which we should perform the exact same action and remove the cube and it does so we'll leave that uh, tutorial there for now we've learned the basics of how we can use code and how we can integrate the two in unity so next episode we're going to look a little at um, using variables um, and see what we can do there. So we'll be dealing with possibly integers, um, actual physical game objects in the Unity world, and various different things as well as um, different functions. So there is a long way to go and a lot to learn in um, coding for Unity. There is a lot and I mean a lot to learn. So we'll go into it step by step and see where we end up. So have a just take, take your notes Write your notes on the script if you need to with your double slashes. And yeah, I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching.